One of the greatest obstacles to crafting health and wellness is identifying and controlling inflammation. It's at the core of all complex and chronic diseases, and it's the driving mechanism that underlies the most common symptoms that people like you struggle to overcome. Join us as we explore cutting-edge science and research to give you the information and tools you need to create the quality of life you want and deserve. And now, here is the host of Inflammation Nation, Dr. Stephen Nosworthy. All right, and welcome back to our detoxification series on the Inflammation Nation. We're going to turn now from some of the more theoretical ways of looking at detox and, and talk about some of the practical stuff. Um, and what I'm going to do is just give you an overview of the three different steps in the 3D detox program and then talk about some frequently asked questions. Now, I'm, I'm not going to go into tons of detail um, in terms of what needs to be done in each step of the 3D detox. Um, I'll save all of that information for the, the actual 3D detox program if you decide that you want to uh, purchase that on my website and then go through it on your own. There's a lot more information and detail than what I've been sharing here with the podcast because the podcast is really just about creating awareness and um, about giving you that big picture overview and then just simply empowering you to make the choice that you think that that's something that you need to try to explore on your own or or not. Um, and of course, it's your health, your body, your choice, and uh, you can do or not do with this information, whatever you wish. So just as a reminder, the 3D detox is, is based on what I call the new science of detoxification, which is not really new science. It's been around for several decades, uh, but nevertheless, it takes a very long time for information to go from the research world down into uh, clinical education and then clinical practice. Um, some estimates are that it takes about 50 years for something to first show up in research and then ultimately be placed into, say, a medical textbook that new doctors start to learn. And so there's a big disconnect. There's quite often, and this is true not just of detoxification, but many other things, particularly uh, autoimmunity, there's so much information that's actually being published that doesn't get taught in basic medical training or uh, the basic training of alternative medicine practitioners, just simply because of that lag time and that gap, which is why it's so important for doctors to be constantly going to seminars and not just putting in hours with continuing education uh, courses just to you know keep their license. They have to be actively engaged in learning this. Otherwise, they just end up you know using techniques and approaches and thought processes that could be decades old and very outdated, which unfortunately is a sad commentary on the healthcare continuum. But nevertheless, let's talk about 3D detox. If you remember, I call it 3D just not because we're looking at detox from, you know, more than one dimension, but because each phase, each of the three phases starts with the letter D. It's very simple. Um, so phase one is deload, what I also call pretox. Phase two is detoxification. And phase three is what I call deep tox, which is um, repairing damaged cells. And so let's talk just a little bit about, in fact, I, let me give you the overview and I'll, I'll talk just a little about, a bit about each of the three different phases before we tackle some frequently asked questions. So the first one, the deload phase or the pretox, these are really the steps that you need to take before you actually support your liver or uh, whatever to do your detox. Um, and, and I'll tell you this, is that if you don't do some preparatory work and make sure some things are in place before you start to drive an aggressive detoxification process, then it's almost like bailing a sinking ship where your ability to, to bail out the water um, is no better than the rate at which the water comes in. Because remember, you're constantly being exposed. And if you're already behind the eight ball and have some kind of a, a, a toxin load that you're trying to clear, if you don't do some things first to get rid of that or modify the inputs into the system, then again, you're, you're still only just trying to play catch up. And so the deload phase is, is all about preparation. Now, these, even though I talk about and, and in the course teach these different phases uh, as discrete and separate items, there is commonality and there is bleed over. Because some of the things that I might have someone do in a pretox or a deload phase also double as supporting detox. And, and so I'm fudging just a little bit in separating these out into deload and detox and deep tox phases 
but it's just it's the most efficient way to teach it and to share this information. So deload is pretox preparation. The detox phase itself is is how to effectively and safely neutralize and eliminate both xenobiotics and toxicants. And if you remember from prior episodes, a xenobiotic is something that does go through your liver phase one, two, three, four process, and a toxicant does not. And so you can't, for example, rely on supporting your liver, your gallbladder, and your kidneys, which is commonly how things are done, um, if you're trying to eliminate certain types of chemicals, but certainly things like heavy metals. There's no way to handle mercury, for example, through the liver. It just doesn't do that. So you have to have some way to bind it. And so in order to effectively uh, do your detox, you need to know what you're dealing with. Plus, you need to know all the different ways that your body handles these things, whether it is through liver biotransformation or whether it is through some kind of chelating uh, process, for example, supporting glutathione or doing something different. And then there's D3, which is the third phase, and that is your deep tox, because ultimately at the end of the day, what we want is we want to eliminate toxins that are stored deep in our tissues. And I did make this distinction early on, probably in the introductory episode, where we talked about how toxins are in basically one of two different places. They're either inside your cells or they're not, which means they're outside the cells in circulation in your blood, or perhaps in the extracellular space or the space in between your cells. And it's a lot easier to clean up things that are in circulation than it is to access things that are stored deep in your tissues. And the tissues that love to store toxins are fat-based. And so your body fat, your subcutaneous fat, your um, the fat that surrounds your internal organs called your visceral fat, or any organ system that contains a fatty component, like your bone marrow, even your nervous system, uh, even your pancreas has the potential to actually store fat. The liver itself can store fat and also store toxins as well. And so that's, again, just a, a very general overview of the approach. And so let me talk, again, very briefly about each individual phase. During during the, the pre-tox or the deload phase, these are the steps you have to take before you get aggressive with detoxification. And probably the very first step is reduce your exposure to the most common toxins. Things like cleaning up your the quality of your personal cleaner or your, your personal care products, your household cleaners, the soaps and shampoos and all of those things. And then using some kind of binding strategy to bind and neutralize and eliminate what I call the low-hanging fruit, which is the stuff that's just in circulation. I just said a minute ago, it's a lot easier to get rid of things that are already in circulation than it is to reach into your deep storage and your fatty tissues to pull it out to then eliminate it, right? So we have to separate those things. And in fact, one of the very easy ways to tell if you're ready to do a detox is if you've tried a detox and it made you worse. Now, there's different ways that that could actually happen, but um, in many cases, it's because you didn't do step one before you jumped into step two. So just be be aware of that. And, you know, one of the other things that I think is important in this pre-tox uh, deload phase is to improve the flow of bile, function of your gallbladder, and to improve lymphatic flow. And the easiest way to do that is just simply to move your body. And I explain in the program all the different reasons why uh, that is the case. But again, this is about awareness and about having a way to understand the problem um, and, and ultimately, at the end of the day, the way that you detox should be different than the next person. You know, so I can't give you a one size fits all. Everyone needs to detox like this unless we're talking about concepts and principles, which is, again, why I want to go through this in terms of the, the podcast. Uh, step two, the detox itself. It's very important to establish your priorities. What am I trying to do with the detox? It, is my is my quantitative toxin load a problem that I can boost my liver? Is it is it a xenobiotic problem or is it a toxic an issue? Am I going after some kind of a biological toxin or is it a heavy metal? And what's most important? Is it to drive detox or is it to look at my immune system and try to restore tolerance and the function and competence of my immune system before I do the, the detox itself? So it's extremely important to establish your priorities before you launch into the second phase. Again, the detox itself. And obviously there's many different ways to support detox. 
I laid out for you just a general framework of the four different phases or four different steps of detoxification. And somebody might need to support all of them. And, and maybe the only thing that someone needs to do is phase four, which is they have to get their bowels moving on a daily basis and then fix whatever problem is causing their constipation. Maybe somebody needs support in phase one, but not phase two. Maybe the problem is with bile flow. Maybe their gallbladder doesn't contract. Maybe they don't have a gallbladder. And so again, I can't give a one size fits all. Here's a detox program that's going to work for everyone. This is why I want to teach you how to take care of yourself. Then with the detox, I'm sorry, the deep detox phase, and that's deep as in D-E-E-P, deep as in not shallow. That's again about how to access toxins stored deeply in your fatty tissues, and then ultimately to repair the damage done to your cells. Because we have study after study after study that shows that um, toxins embed themselves. Uh, not only are they stored inside fat cells, for example, but because the cell membrane of all of your cells is made up of a combination of uh, protein structures and fat structures, these chemicals can actually embed in your cell membrane. It can cause the cell membrane to not function well, and that can change how the cell behaves. And so ultimately, at the end of the day, it's not just about seeing a quantitative analysis go back to normal. It's about making sure that your cells um, are, are repaired or the cell damage caused by your toxic burden are repaired, as well as making sure that all the metabolic dysregulation caused by your toxin load and how your body responds to that is being managed and being brought back into a state of uh, homeostasis to use a, or balance to use a kind of a trite and, and somewhat overused word. And and that's a, that's a process. And, and so, you know, I would encourage you again to, if you're thinking, well, how long does a detox last? My question to you would be, well, what's your goal? If your goal is to, you know, create a normal-looking quantitative analysis, that's one thing. But if your goal is to control your toxin load and to repair all the things that come after that, then that could be six months. It could be three months. It could be 12 months. It just depends on the scope and the scale and the complexity and where you are along that continuum. Now, I know that was kind of a whirlwind, but I just wanted to to give you a little bit more detail about you know, the three D's of the detox. Let's talk about frequently asked questions. <laughs> um, you know, number one, I just kind of touched on this. How, how long is the detox? Um, I, I really absolutely detest all of these things that you see on the internet and in magazines about doing a three-week detox, a three-day detox, do, do you know, just a, a water fast detox or whatever the case is. The length of detox, because it's an ongoing process and because we're constantly being inundated with new toxins coming into our body, more of the same for the most part, um, number one, you're never done. You're never done. And you might have to, quote, do a, a detox, unquote, multiple times in the first year that you're really dealing, particularly if your health is quite challenged. You might have to kind of cycle in and out of supporting different phases of detox, um, and then maybe the next year you don't have to do it as often. And, and so I can't give a pat answer is how long is the detox? Well, well, I guess the answer is forever, up until the day that you die, because you're detoxing all the time. The question really is, how many variables do I have to manage or compensate for so that I'm detoxing efficiently and effectively on a routine basis? Right? So I have no idea how long a detox is. I can tell you it's not three weeks. <laughs> it's not. It just isn't. Um, another common question is like, what if I have a reaction? This is very common. Um, but, you know, I'll, again, I'll, uh, coming at it from the perspective of a clinician who manages not only his own private clients, but as someone who has taught other doctors for quite a long time now, um, is that uh, most clinicians don't understand how to think about negative reactions that their clients report and they end up doing the wrong thing. So for example, just because you have a, a reaction to a detox, on one hand, it could mean that you are uh, having a reaction to some of the compounds that you might be using. Yes, it is possible to have an immune response to things like milk thistle or dandelion or other compounds, natural compounds that you might use to ramp up your, your liver phase one, phase two pathways. Um, it is also possible that you are detoxing too aggressively and you're pulling 
more things out of storage than you can bind, neutralize, and eliminate. And so you're shifting the balance towards unfavorable physiology. And so you're doing the right thing. You just need to do it less aggressively. And there's, you know, different explanations in between those two. But, you know, ultimately, if you have a reaction, the first thing is to ask your, yourself, well, what is this telling me? And if you're working with a practitioner who's helping you, you have to ask them, well, what does this tell us? And that the answer to that question is going to give you the answer of what to do next, whether that is stop, reduce your dose, find something different to do that accomplishes the same thing. And this is, you know, I guess part of the art of managing individual people using appropriate science. What about detox smoothies or things like lemon water and, and apple cider? You, you see this all the time. In fact, you, if you just go on Google and search for detox smoothie recipes, you will find no shortage of ideas of things that you can put into a smoothie or juice with that theoretically are going to detox your whole body. And it's a bunch of crap, to be honest. The amount of nutrients that you can consume in some kind of a detox shake um, is minuscule compared to the amount of biologically active compounds that you get in well-formulated, clinically-based nutraceuticals. So the idea that you can... It, it, here's a very common thing. with these, Particularly with juice fasts or with detox smoothies is that usually these are done also concurrent with major changes in your diet and your lifestyle. And so you might go through a three-week process where you cut out all grains, you cut all, out all junk food, you don't eat sweets, you aren't having this big sugar load affecting your blood sugar, and then you do these detox smoothies maybe once or twice a day, and you feel a lot better. Well, I'm going to tell you it's because of all the other changes you made. It's not because of the magic of a detox smoothie. Now, maybe there are some people out there who they just need a little tiny boost in their detox capacity, and maybe the small amount of active compounds in a smoothie or shake uh, is what makes a difference for them. But if that's the case, they really don't have a problem that's of any great magnitude. If you are unwell, if you are listening to this podcast because you are deeply entrenched in the inflammation nation and you've got multiple inflammatory issues and your metabolism is really screwed up and just excuse me, dysregulated, you're not going to fix it with a detox smoothie. Please don't get hoodwinked into that. And then the final frequently asked question, and, and it's frequently asked because there's so much misinformation about it out there, is you know, drinking lemon water or drinking things like apple cider vinegar. And I tell you, I, I tried, I really tried to find some evidence in the scientific literature that suggested that these things actually support detoxification. And I spent hours in preparing my 3D detox um, course. I spent hours looking for scientific evidence that lemon water supports the liver or apple cider vinegar improves your detox. I couldn't find anything. What I did find is that lemon juice and even apple cider vinegar contain things that might protect liver tissue. For example, um, some of the antioxidants that you find in, in lemons and in lemon juice are antioxidants that have particular effect on liver cells in terms of improving their antioxidant status, but it does nothing to improve phase one, phase two liver function. Absolutely nothing. So maybe you get a little boost to liver function because it's not being assaulted as much by free radicals and inflammation. But again, the amount that you're going to get drinking lemon water, it's not going to really significantly have a major impact. Um, and the same thing with apple cider vinegar. The two main things that we get with that, especially if you're using organic apple cider vinegar with the mother, is you're getting acidification of the gut and you're getting some boost to your microbiome. You're getting some pre and probiotic effect. And Maybe you're like, well, Doc, I don't believe you because I drink lemon water and I feel a lot better or I you know, have apple cider vinegar. Well, the effect is probably not what you think. I mean, I'm, I wouldn't doubt you if you told me that those things helped you. What I would doubt is the explanation, the potential explanation that drinking lemon water actually increases your detox capacity and supports phase one, phase two liver function. It just doesn't. There's no evidence of that in the scientific literature 
whatsoever. And similar things with these apple cider vinegar drinks. Now, do I enjoy those myself? Absolutely. In fact, one of my favorite things to do is to get some water, um, put in some fresh lemon, some apple cider vinegar. I tend to like it on the tart side, but I do put some natural sweetener in there. And I might drink that throughout the day. I might use it as my workout drink. I just find it incredibly refreshing. It makes me want to consume more liquid. And I do feel better about doing it, but I don't think that it's improving my detoxification capacity. All right, I'm going to leave it there. That's just a quick flyby overview with a little bit more detail of 3D detox and some frequently asked questions. All right, we'll see you next time on the Inflammation Nation. Thank you so much for listening to the Inflammation Nation. If you found this episode valuable, please rate, review, and subscribe to our podcast. Be the first to know when a new episode drops so that you can stay on top of your game. It also helps others like you find the answers they need. And why not head over to my main website, drnoseworthy.com, that's drnoseworthy.com, to explore my personalized functional medicine coaching programs, submit a question to the podcast, maybe take a quiz, or even reach out to me using the contact form that you can find there. We'll see you next time.